start out with a survey of the body. Go from the top of the head down to the tips of the toes. Any place where you sense patterns of tension, allow them to dissolve. If there seem to be parts that are cut off from the breath energy, think of the circulation going there, the breath energy going there. Try to bring things into a state of balance and wholeness. And then breathe. Keep on breathing in a way that maintains that sense of being tranquil inside. A part of this accomplishes relaxation. If intense during the day, you allow that tension to dissolve. But it's more than just stress reduction. Having the body tranquil is an important part of letting the energy go to the mind. The energy used to be tight in the body, let that move to the area of the mind. There's plenty of passages in the canon where they talk about people receiving a teaching from the Buddha and then going off and getting into seclusion. And they're heedful, ardent, and resolute. And because of that, they attain awakening. Now, heedful and ardent are explained in many places in the canon. To be heedful means realizing that your actions make a big difference. They're dangerous in greed, aversion, and delusion. But you can overcome those dangers through training and that confidence that your actions will make a difference. It makes you careful in what you do and say and think. That's heedfulness. To be ardent is basically to engage in right effort. You generate desire to prevent unskillful qualities from arising, to get rid of ones that have arisen, to give rise to skillful qualities that haven't arisen yet. And once they're there, you try to maintain them and let them develop. You keep at it. That's ardency. To be resolute, though, there are very few places in the canon where it's mentioned or defined. But there's one. It comes down to one, getting rid of the hindrances, sensual desire or longing, ill will, sloth and torpor, restlessness and anxiety, doubt. Engaging in right effort doubles up there with ardency. Having your mindfulness established and unmuddled. Having your body tranquil. And then having the mind concentrated and gathered into one. It's interesting that the tranquility of the body would be mentioned there as part of resolution. We tend to think of resolution as being just very strong and full of exertion. But how do you maintain the exertion of the mind unless you can tranquilize the body? Otherwise, the energy that goes into keeping the body tense is not available to the mind. You release that energy and make it available to the mind. So it can become concentrated, can become gathered into one. The term gathered into one there, this is one of those passages again that shows that the Buddha is not talking about one-pointedness. The term in the Pali, eka kata, is sometimes translated as eka, one, aga, point, itness. But aga doesn't necessarily mean point. It has lots of other meanings as well, including gathering place. Because concentration is a dwelling. It's a place where you enter in and you stay and dwell. It only makes sense that you are gathered in one gathering place, not scattered around. The mind is strong. This is where you have to be careful, because there is that tendency as you go through the body relaxing it, the mind gets very relaxed as well. The breath gets calm and refined. Your awareness gets calm and refined, and it begins to lose its moorings. That's something you've got to watch out for. So you're combining a tranquil body and a strong mind. One way to do that is to go through the body several times, making sure that the patterns of tension 
in the little places, the ones in the knees, the ones in the different parts of the body where you tend to ignore. Be very thorough in going through them. And then find one area of the body where you can gather around. And then think of that one area then connecting with the whole body. So there's a strength of concentration at the same time that it's not held together with a hard shell. You're centered, but there's a tranquilizing energy going out from that center. And you find that this way you can maintain the strength of your concentration a lot more easily. If there's a lot of physical tension, it wears you down. So whatever way you find of keeping the mind strong and centered, gathered into one, while at the same time the body stays relaxed, that's what you're aiming for. Because it's that strength of mind that's going to be the resolution. And being heedful, ardent, and resolute. So you don't want to waste your energy with a tense body. Think of all the energy coming into this one spot, and then the relaxation energy radiating out from there to bring things into balance. So the mind can stay solid. And then deal with any thoughts that come up and say, well, but next. Trying to get it solid like this is a skill. And you try to see what's going to happen if you maintain this solidity, rather than just treating as one more step in the concentration. This is where things are going to be centered. When insights arise, they're going to arise here. If not right here, very close to right here. John Lee makes this point. So you've got the mind really centered, very strongly centered. And if there's something you want to know, you move the mind just a tiny bit, pull it out a little bit. And John Fuin would call this lifting the mind above its object. But it's also lifting the mind above the mind a little bit, just so you can observe what's going on. And you can pose a question and see if any answer comes. If any, no answer comes, go back into the concentration, back into the center. until you notice something subtle coming up that you might not have seen otherwise. This is an important principle in the meditation, just getting very, very still to see subtle movements. All too often we anticipate where the insights are going to come. But if there's an, it's an insight you can anticipate, it's not going to be anything new. We're looking for the unanticipated insights. And those will come only when you're very quiet. And something small happens that's unexpected, and you place a question mark next to it. What's this? Don't jump to any conclusions. Just watch. And it may not show for itself for a while, and then it come back again. Little changes in the steadiness of the mind. Little changes in what's going on in the body. It's the subtle things that you're looking for. And you have to be resolute in order to see them. So resolution doesn't mean simply just throwing yourself into, into the practice. It means doing it in such a way that you have stamina. And particularly stamina of the mind. The body, as it's relaxed, will be able to stay right here. Won't be much of a problem. So all of your interests can go into what the mind is up to. But the ability to, for the mind to stay resolute like this requires that you are familiar with the body. It's not that we're ignoring the body, quite the opposite. We're working through all the patterns of tension to release them, but we're doing it not so that the mind can relax and let go of its tensions as well. It's more developing a different kind of strength that's not a tense strength, but it's very intense. 
That's the kind of strength you can maintain. That's the kind of solidity you can maintain. That will see you through to something special.